In this video, we're going to talk about concavity. What does it mean for a function to be concave up or concave down? And we're going to begin with an example, this function f of x, this polynomial. Find the intervals where f is concave up and where it is concave down. So what does that even mean? Now, I've drawn the graph here in Desmos, and concavity is going to have to do with how is the function bending. Now, let's draw in a tangent line right here at 1. Notice that f prime of 1 is going to be positive, right, because we have a positive slope here. But if we move a little to the right here, the slope's getting smaller, right? It's getting a little less and less positive, right? We're getting a smaller slope until all of a sudden we get a slope of 0. And then now the slope is getting smaller even more because it's becoming a negative slope. And then it gets more and more negative until we get to some point about right here where it starts changing directions here. And then all of a sudden the slope's getting bigger, right? It's, it's, it's less and less negative. Now the slope is 0. And now it's a positive slope. And now it's more and more positive. So there's a point in here, it's actually called an inflection point, where this tangent line stops turning one way and starts turning another way. So another way to think about this is the tangent line is going to be turning in a clockwise fashion over here. What we say is that the graph is concave down here until we get to this inflection point. As we move left to right, it's moving in a clockwise fashion. But once we hit that inflection point, it starts turning in a counterclockwise fashion. Now, it turns out that concavity has to do with f double prime. When f double prime is negative, the function is going to be concave down, like right over here. So why does it have to do with f double prime? Well, remember, f prime has to do with the slope of the tangent line here. f double prime is going to be like the change in the slope, right? It's like a rate of change of f prime. So notice, how is the slope of the tangent line changing? Well, it's becoming smaller. It's getting smaller and smaller until we get to 0. It's getting sm even smaller still. It's getting more negative until we get to here. And then the slope starts increasing. Even though it's a negative slope right here, the slope is increasing as we, as we move to the right. OK, over here, the slope, even though it's positive, the slope is decreasing. Right? Like, this is a positive slope here, right? But notice, as we move to the right, the slope is decreasing. OK, so here, where the slope is decreasing, until we get to that inflection point, it's concave down. So f double prime will be negative over here. f double prime will be positive over here, where it's concave up. I think of concave down as being almost like an upside down bowl here, like an upside down bowl. And then over here, where it's concave up, it's a right side up bowl. So one thing I want to remind you of is to find where a function f is increasing or decreasing, we look at f prime, f single prime, where that's positive or negative. To find where the function is concave up or concave down, we look at f double prime, where f double prime is positive or negative. Now, a question we could ask, though, is how do we find this inflection point? How do we find where the function's concave down and where it's concave up if we're just given the formula for the function without knowing what the graph looks like? So let's actually do that for this specific problem. So we have our function f of x. Let's look at f prime of x. We have 3x squared minus 18x plus 24. And if we wanted to find where is this function, where is the original function increasing or decreasing, we would have to find where f prime is positive or negative. We did that in the last video. So what we do is factor this and then find the zeros and we make a sign chart for f prime. Well, for concavity, we're going to do basically the same thing, but for f double prime. So f double prime notice is 6x minus 18. And we can actually factor that as 6 times x minus 3. And what we're trying to find is where is f double prime positive or negative? In other words, what values for x can we plug in here that will make f double prime be positive? What values can we plug in here that will make it negative? So what we need to do is make a sign chart, not for f prime, but for f double prime. Now, notice there's only one 0 here of this f double prime. That's x equals 3. If we were to pick in a number that's bigger than 3, so let's say like 5, and plug in 5 for x, would this be positive or negative? Well, if we plug in 5 here, that's positive. And of course, 6 is positive. So positive times positive is positive. OK, so for any point over here, right, f double prime is going to be positive. By the way, f double prime of 3 would be 0. What if we plug in something less than 3? So let's say 2 or 0 or negative 11. Well, if you plug it in here, this will be negative, And this is positive. And a negative times positive is negative. So if any value out here we're going to get is negative. So notice f double prime changes from being at, uh, from being negative here to positive here. So at 3, we have what's called an inflection point. Now, the fact that f double prime is negative here means that the original function f 
is concave down over here. And f double prime being positive over here means the original function is concave up. And notice that actually agrees with our picture here, right? To the left of three, the graph is concave down. It almost looks like an upside down bowl. That's kind of how I think of being concave down. It's like a bowl that's upside down. Concave up is sort of like a right side up bowl, right? Concave up, uh, where the function is concave up to the right of three. Okay, so let's answer the, the question here. Where is f concave down? Well, f is concave down on this interval. Notice that interval is negative infinity to three. Okay, and we're gonna use an open interval. And where is f concave up? Well, it is concave up on the interval from three to positive infinity. Now, what we say is f has an inflection point at, well, where? f has an inflection point at x equals three. Okay, as an inflection point at x equals three. Now, what is the inflection point? The inflection point is actually a point, right? It's an ordered pair. So what is the inflection point? So what we're really trying to find is what are the coordinates of this point here? Well, it's three comma something. Now I could click on it here. It's actually three comma eight, but how would I know that it's three comma eight just based on the formula? So our inflection point is going to be three comma something. Well, it's actually gonna be three comma eight, but how do I know it's eight? Well, what you'd have to do is go back to your original function and find what is f of three. So you plug in three here, so that'd be 27 minus 81 and then plus 72 and work out all the details, plug in at three for everywhere you see next and what you're gonna end up getting is that f of three is eight. So our inflection point is three comma eight. Okay, so going over again, what did we do? Well, how did we find the inflection point? How did we find where a function is concave up or concave down? You look at the original function and you take f double prime. So remember f prime, where f prime is positive or negative, that has to do with where the original function is increasing or decreasing. To find where a function is concave up or concave down, you look at f double prime, okay? And we make a sign chart for f double prime, where f double prime is negative, that's where the function is concave down, where f double prime is positive, that's where the function is concave up. Now we have an inflection point whenever we change concavity. So notice f double prime of three was zero. That was a candidate for where we could have an inflection point. But if on the left over here, it had been plus, 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 and on the right, it had been plus, 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 which can happen. It could be uh, concave up here and concave up here, even though f double prime is zero. In that case, you don't actually have an inflection point at three. It's only an inflection point if you change concavity from like concave down to concave up or concave up to concave down. And you can see that based on the sign chart here. Notice it's clear we have an inflection point at three because we changed from being concave down to concave up. And then to find the y coordinate, you just plug in three into the original function. You look at f of three. You don't look at f double prime of three. f double prime of three is gonna be zero, right? But f of three will be eight. Okay, let's do one more example here. Let f of x be this polynomial. Find the inflection points of the polynomial. And I have graphed this on Desmos and we'll look at the graph in a second, but let's just do this algebraically here using calculus. f prime is gonna be negative four x cubed plus 12 x squared minus four. Okay, and again, to find where the original function is increasing or decreasing, we'd have to factor this. I'm not sure how well this will factor. But anyways, let's look at f double prime. We're not looking at where the, we're not being asked to find where the function is increasing or decreasing. We're asked to find the inflection points. So let's take another derivative. We're gonna get negative 12 x squared plus 24 x. So we need to find where is f double prime positive or negative? Well, notice both of these terms have an x in them and both have a 12 in them. In fact, we could factor out a negative 12, let's say negative 12 x. And inside here, we'd have x to give us negative 12x squared. And then we'd have minus two because negative 12x times minus two is 24x. So what are the zeros here? What numbers can you plug in here that will make this zero? This one would give you x equals two is a zero. If you plug in two there, that factor is zero. Here we get zero. If you plug in zero, it's not 12 or negative 12. It's zero that get, makes this one zero. So we actually have two places where f double prime is zero. We have zero and two. And so we need to make this sign chart for f double prime. So if we pick a number between zero and two, so let's say like one, well, if we plug in one here, that's negative. And this will also be negative, right? Cause it's negative 12 times one. So negative times negative though is positive. Okay, so, so we get a, any number between zero and two, any number between zero and two, not just one, but any number, you're, it's gonna be positive. By the way, it'll be zero at these two points. 
Now, if we pick a number that's bigger than two, let's say like five, that will be positive, that will be negative, so we're gonna get negative. If we pick something less than zero, uh, both of these will be negative, but um, I'm sorry, uh, this one will be positive actually, and this will be negative. So what you're gonna end up getting is negative. Okay, so notice at both of these points, zero and two, we change concavity. So F has inflection points at X equals zero and at X equals two. Okay, so F has inflection points at X equals zero and X equals two. Now, what are the inflection points? What are the ordered pairs? Well, we need to find what's F of zero and what is F of two. Well, f of zero, you can just look right here, f of zero is gonna be five. And f of two, if you work out the details, it ends up being 13. So our inflection points are zero comma five and two comma 13. We have two inflection points. So let's look at the graph in Desmos. Here's the graph. Notice the function is concave down over here on this interval from minus infinity to zero, it's concave down. And doesn't that agree with our chart for F double prime? It's concave down until we get to zero. Between zero and two, it's concave up. And notice between zero and two, it's concave up. It's like this right side up bowl. And from two off to infinity here, it's concave down again. So notice we have these two inflection points here that happen at zero and two, and the ordered pairs here, the inflection points themselves are actually zero comma five and two comma 13. So we can see that the graph agrees with everything that we did algebraically. Now, one last thing that I would like to mention is suppose we wanna find a function where on this little interval here, a to b, we, we want f prime to be positive, right? f prime to be greater than zero. So we'll say f prime of x is greater than zero for all x in between a and b. And we also want f double prime of x to be greater than zero. So could we come up with a function that is both increasing and concave up? What would that look like? Well, increasing means as we go left or right, it's going up, but concave up means it's going up at a faster and faster rate. So a function might look something like this. Okay, it's, that's increasing and it's concave up. Notice the way it's bending is like this. Suppose we wanted to come up with an example though where f prime was still positive, but f double prime was negative. What does that mean? Well, f prime being positive means the function is increasing on this interval, but f double prime is negative means it's concave down. Well, here, it's gotta still be going up as we go left to right, it's, but it's gonna be bending the other way. Notice this was bending this way, it's concave up. This one is concave down, it's bending that way. Okay, both of them are increasing functions. Both of them have f prime being positive, but this one is bending a certain way, concave up. This one's bending the other direction. Okay, what about these last two examples? Suppose we wanna find a function or draw an example of a function where f prime is negative. So what that means is the function is decreasing on this interval. By the way, when we say f prime of x is less than zero, we mean for any x between a and b, f prime of x is negative, right? So it's, it's going down, right? The slope of the tangent line at any point would be negative, so the function is decreasing. But if we want f double prime to be positive, it has to be concave up. So how could we have a function that's decreasing but concave up? Well, in that case, you'd have something like this. Okay, that's decreasing, but it's concave up. Okay, notice it's like, it's like a piece of like a bowl that is right side up, right? It's going down, but it's still concave up. Now, what about if we wanted it to be going down but concave down? Well, in that case, it's gotta be decreasing, but it's bending the other way. Okay, so notice concavity has to do with how is the function bending? Which way is the function bending? And so again, a graph that bends like this is concave down. Now, by the way, you may only look even the first piece of the graph here, that would still be concave down, or this top piece would be concave down, or any piece of this graph would be concave down. So we don't have to look at the whole thing here and say it's concave down, even just this one little piece from here to here, it's concave down because it's bending that way. So this in this part over here, it's an increasing function, but it's concave down. Actually over here, it's decreasing and concave down. Okay, concave up, it's bending this way. So this is a concave up. And notice, uh, even just looking at this piece right here, it's still concave up, even though it's decreasing right here, it's concave up. Okay, over here, it's, increasing, but still concave up. So F double prime being negative would be concave down. F double prime being positive would be concave up. So I had mentioned in a previous video that we talk about the geometric significance of F double prime. 
and it has to do with concavity. By the way, there's also something called the second derivative test. Remember we talked about the first derivative test before? Well, the reason it was called the first derivative test, you might have wondered about this, was because it's looking at the first derivative, f prime. There's also something called the second derivative test that has to do with the second derivative, f double prime. We're not going to really talk about that in this class, but the first derivative test and the second derivative test essentially do the same thing. What they do is they classify the critical numbers as giving a, a, lo a local max or a local min. So we're just going to do the first derivative test in this class, but there is something called the second derivative test, which is just another way of doing what the first derivative test does. It, it tests the critical numbers to decide whether they give you a local max or a local min.